This program contains true stories of rescues. All of the 911 calls you will hear are real. Whenever possible, the actual people involved have helped us reconstruct the events as they happened. In an emergency, you may have to try to save the life of someone you love. I'm William Shatner. Tonight, true stories of men, women, and children with the courage and willingness to get involved on Rescue 911. On Saturday afternoon, July 28, 1990, Gary and Julie Mayo returned to their home in Keller, Texas after visiting a local nursery. It was a nice day, sunny day. So uh, we went off and bought some plants. We intended spending the afternoon uh, planting these plants. While Gary and Julie worked in the garden with their nephew, their three daughters, Nikki, Aaron, and Kelly, played nearby. When we originally bought the house, there was no gate, actually, uh, from the back door of the house to the pool. That was the first thing I did, was actually build a fence with the gates on it. Normally, I kept the gate locked and uh, the only time it was ever open was when I was next to the pool. Unfortunately, and, uh, I was next to the pool. I remember Nikki going in. Uh, I don't really remember Aaron going in, but I wasn't paying much attention. sprinkler and I stood there for about oh, 20 seconds maybe trying to unscrew the, the holes from the sprinkler and I couldn't do it and then I just had to turn to the pool and I, that's when I saw her Communication supervisor Brent Robbins took the call. Keller, 911 emergency. Yes, we need an ambulance. My daughter's been in the pool. I think she's drowned. What happened to her? Her baby went in the pool. Okay, how old is she? She's two and a half. Okay, did she get her out of the pool now? Oh, um, yeah, she's out of She looked like she's in the Okay, can you tell her she's breathing? Uh, I think she was going to go This one was especially rough for me. My wife was six months pregnant at the time of that call. So, you know, I started, I put myself in, in Julie's place. Okay, all right, ma'am, you got to calm down. Go, go. Officer John Lee was in the station when the call came in, and he ran out the door and was, was on the way. Medic 1, Engine 2, 311, respond to medical emergency. Rescue units with the Keller Fire Department were also sent to the scene. Mouth and nose with his mouth. Cover the mouth and the nose with your mouth. 
Tell them to get two little soft puffs of air, blow it into the baby. I didn't know it was around your mouth. Two soft puffs of air. Now watch for your baby's chest to rise up, okay? I watch for her chest to rise up. And don't tilt his head back too far. Do she's that coming two times. She's, she's coming now. Oh, okay. is she breathing, Gary? Is the child breathing now? No, I don't think so. Please. Okay, just keep telling him to do that. Tilt the head back, tilt cover the, the mouth back, and the nose, and give her two soft puffs of air. Two soft puffs of air. I don't think she's... Oh, God, I don't think she's breathing. They're going to be there in just a second, ma'am. Just calm down. God, where are you? Please. Please. Keller police officer John Lee was the first to arrive. Just bring him to the baby, okay? Okay. All right, ma'am. Take care of yourself. Can you hear me? Hello? I felt a little bit of hope. I felt that, thank God, I've got somebody who knows what they're doing. Moments later, paramedic David Jones and EMT Charlie Mitchell got to the scene. When we got there, she did have a pulse, but she wasn't controlling her respirations. She wasn't getting any oxygen in. She was really cyanotic. Her color was pale blue. Okay. Oh, oh, she's going. Y'all can get an IV started on her. Can I get an alcohol press? Yeah. Kelly? Can you hear me, Kelly? My greatest concern was the possibility of brain damage, because with the Kelly, drowning, you, you don't know exactly how long they've been without oxygen. Her level of consciousness was still real low, so I called for care flight. Okay. Fourteen minutes after Kelly was pulled from the water, the medical chopper arrived to transport her to the hospital. Well, I didn't realize she was going in a helicopter at first. They just put her on the stretcher, and I just went out there, and I was running behind them, and then they said, you can't go on, so there's not room for you. Kelly's parents could only watch as the chopper took their youngest daughter away. When we continue, I try and reassure them that everything is being done Okay. Um, that she's very sick, and it is possible that she's not going to survive. When two-and-a-half-year-old Kelly Mayo was found floating face down in her family's swimming pool, her parents managed to get her breathing again using CPR instructions received over the phone. But as Kelly was airlifted to a nearby hospital, no one knew how severe her brain damage might be. The flight to Cook's Fort Worth Children's Medical Center took less than 10 minutes. Okay. Is that a two year old uh, near drowning? Yeah, that's what we got here. She's got a near drowning. Pediatric neurologist Warren Marks assessed Kelly's condition. She was posturing, that is, all of her extremities, her arms and her legs were sticking straight out. She had abnormal muscle tone. Uh, which is a sign that either your brain is swelling or that you have injury to the brain stem. Why don't we get Johnny down? She's going to need a bed. Hey, hey, okay, there you go, Johnny. Pediatric intensivist bed. Dr. Johnny Griggs was also called in. Okay, okay Gary, here. let's get a tube that holds some traction for you here. The main objective when she came in was to protect her brain from further injury. We would continue to do all the breathing for Kelly, keeping her paralyzed with uh, medications, keeping her very heavily sedated with medications so that she would expend very minimal energy. Two and a half year old Kelly Mayo was in a medically induced coma. We put her in the CAT scan and there was no evidence of a blood clot, nothing that required the surgeon to go to the operating room with Kelly, but her brain did look swollen. Dr. Marks. I try and reassure them that everything is being done, um, that she's very sick, and it is possible that she's not going to survive. At that point, I, I lost it. I started shaking. In fact, the wife had to shout at me to, uh, to bring me back to reality. So we were there for about, about two or three hours before we went up to intensive care to see her. She looks so small and ill. Okay, consistently 35? Uh -huh, about 35. Her blood pressure and vital signs initially had been stable, but they now had started to fluctuate as well. 
Dr. Griggs was trying to reduce the swelling and the pressure in her brain with drugs. One to two cc's per kilo, I haven't any problem with that. The first 48 hours were marked by the spikes of an intracranial pressure. The monitor reads out a digital number with each spike to me indicated that the brain was in more trouble. And Dr. Griggs, he said they couldn't control the pressure any longer. And he thought she was going to have serious brain damage. I always see Kelly floating in the pool, just face down. And I see that all the time. And I just think, God, how long was she in there? And how long did she struggle for? And what was she thinking? If she did try and call out, then we couldn't hear her. <laughs> Kelly had been in the hospital for four days when Julie returned to her room to find everything had changed. Gary was sat there holding her. He was sat in a rocking chair holding her. So I kind of knew then that she was going to be okay. <laughs> so then I... Uh... Put baby in Julie's arms. It was crack. My moment came when mom was able to hold Kelly. Uh, you've given a child back to a family. A lot of families are not this fortunate. Kelly was released from the hospital after 10 days. She still has periodic checkups, but after three months, it's clear she has no brain damage. The stupidity on my part that did happen in the first place. I should have watched it better. And the bottom line is, even if you're near them, you can't turn your back for 30 seconds because they can be in. You don't see anybody around, and your baby could be dead. Drowning is one of the most common causes of accidental death in young children in this country. Kelly's whole family is grateful that she managed to survive. From the policeman, the dispatcher, to the medics, and the fire department, and the helicopter people, and all the doctors and the nurses. You know, it's fantastic the way it works. Everything just goes so quick. She fell in the pool and she couldn't breathe, and I was scared. Thank you for saving my sister. Mm-hmm.